Hey, what's up everyone? This is Edward at iHeart 3D Printing. Or maybe a different name when you see this because I'm trying to, I'm thinking of changing the name. Welcome back. Um, I haven't made a video in a while because, well, there's not much to say. I did, there's not much to say of one thing, but there's one, one video to say of many things. So the Newman 3D website, I'm not totally pursuing it right now. My little girl's right here, so if I look distracted, it's because I am, and I'm trying to get these done in one take. Newman 3D, I sold all the filament that I imported when Amazon had a supply issue back at the start of the uh, pandemic or whatever. So went and started off doing different things, and I got a welder, and I built myself an enclosure, and I tried to sell these enclosures. I built a second website, steelshellenclosures.com, and I tried to sell these enclosures. It didn't work out. I spent a lot of money on advertising, more than almost the price of like the tools and everything to make these enclosures. And what I'm finding is it's so hard to make money from a 3D print community. I would say every 3D print, like most of them, the people that you're marketing to or the algorithm wants to market to, there's a lot of people who think they know everything. And it's so annoying when you're marketing or you're trying to make a sale and you're getting an email somebody questioning your design choices and you're kind of like are you gonna buy it or you're gonna what are you trying to do here bro so you spend a lot of money you know trying to get this product out and it's your first iteration there's no money being made on it i'm i'm burning more money advertising than i would make on it but i'm trying to get some traction uh it didn't work out you know you kind of just go and and, and reflect on a lot of your ideas a lot of <coughs> A lot of the stuff that's going on um, in the world, I just, I kind of just shut down. I put so much effort and emphasis in all these ideas that I have. I built an awesome 3D printer. I built this enclosure. I went and bought a Perugia to test it out. Um, I'm printing ABS right now. Um, if you look at the top, there's another device. <laughs> But the reason I'm making this video right now is to catch you up. There's a thing I always say, I used to say, is like whatever you create right now, when you go and look back on it, if it's still around, only then can you judge if it was a good idea or a bad idea at the time. So like when we used to do graphics design for sign making or, or we're trying to sell a product for our business. Hold on, Reese. Trying to sell a product for our business, we would design something in software first and then you get kind of where like you see it so much that you don't like it no more. You're like, oh man, this thing needs to be started from scratch. Scratch. Before you go and start from scratch, stop working on it. Walk away for a week, month, even a year, whatever, you know, whatever it takes to, for you to take interest in that idea again and come back to it. And then ask yourself, was it a bad idea or was it a cool idea? Because when you have time to separate from the creative aspect, you get to look at it like a normal person would look at it, if that makes sense. Creative people tend to be perfectionists, especially if they're very intelligent. They tend to be perfectionists. They see all the flaws in something and they go ballistic trying to fix all the flaws. Well, perfection is never perfect. It's a never ending process. So the more you fix, the more needs to be fixed. You'll never get out of that. So sometimes you gotta step back, walk away from something, Look at it without the emotion that you've had or the creative process. Look at it like a normal user, and then you decide for yourself if that is was a stupid idea. So I have this. I have some things I made in the garage. I bought a welder. I've been welding. I'm into a lot of hobbies, and 3D printing is just one aspect, and I made the channel for 3D printing. But 3D printing is kind of like regurgitating the same old thing over and over and over again. Oh, we're reviewing this cheap printer, or this cheap thing, or this is how you do this cheap. And you come out with a bunch of parodies of how to do stuff super cheap that's almost unrealistic. And that's not what I wanna do. I don't wanna start reviewing cheap Chinese printers. Although, supposedly there's a lot of money in that. I mean, a lot of these guys are making a living reviewing printers and getting uh, affiliate commissions. So that explains why there's so much emphasis in the 3D print community to review cheap Chinese printers. Um, it's often not for your benefit, but just to try to make some money. Let me show you my ideas and, you know, leave a nice comment. If you want to support me, first just leave a comment, subscribe. Do not let me, don't watch it. Say to yourself, oh, that was pretty cool. And then uh, not subscribe or not hit like or not say anything because I'm not making any money on any of this stuff. I've, I'm taking losses. I've may, maybe spent between 10 to 20 grand of my life savings 
on linear rails that I haven't even used, still in the package. High wind, no name brand. Um, I got cut off, so I'm gonna resume. High wind rails, no name brand rails. Um, all kinds of laser cut steel, laser cut aluminum, welders, welding wire, TIGs. Uh, I built tables to help me manufacture spray paint or spray paint 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 supplies like sprayers and stuff I mean in countless hours and I enjoy it. I, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I spent a, a, a good portion of My life and my money on pursuing this so I don't know what I was saying a minute ago because the video cut off I loaded it on a computer and then I'm like, well, I just better finish this tangent before I disassemble everything and start showing you the projects that I've made. All right, guys, so we're in the garage and I've done some cleanup over here. These are monitors from a business I used to own. My table for making signs and banners. Here's a banner for my daughter's birthday party. Here is a steel enclosure that I tried to sell. I mean, I welded it, got it all looking good. The ads for it were pretty crummy, and the paint job that I used for the ads was pretty bad. I, I used a rattle can. Eventually upgraded to professional, more professional sprayers, and I bought a Prusa. You can see this right here. It uses acoustic ceiling tiles, both an insulation and a sound dampener. You can see that the magnetic bulb holder. I got a fire suppressant in there. One of those sound dampening uh, paver bricks. I really went all out on this, trying to sell it. Couldn't find any takers. Not not any real takers. I mean, I had a few people, but not enough to justify a, a whole business out of. And I'll spend in maybe thousands in advertising. The door screws shut, so like if there is a fire or something happens, you don't want the door blown open. These are magnets underneath, um, but it's pretty cool. I had to say, I got a lot to say about enclosures more than what you see in the video. Here's my sign printer that I relocated to my garage. Not the most optimal place for it, but you know, you gotta make money, you gotta make money. Here's some Wall Street Bets decals I was selling on Etsy. I use very high quality uh, materials to sell my little things. Yeah, I kind of want to include vinyl printing inside my channel, expand it a little bit. Here is a mild steel table with a Russian Baltic birch. Super stiff piece of plywood. It's very straight and flat, but very stiff and strong. Heavy duty. I put wheels on all of my tables because I'm a one-man show and I like to work outside I live in a place with nice weather and it expands my workshop quite a bit to have be able to bring tables outside here's my welder that I bought my head did have a generic welder just to get anything done was just a headache here's another table 16 gauge steel table this time at the tabletop uses two by fours um, Kind of hard to see all the stuff I'm gonna knock over through the camera and you can see quite a bit and there's another 16 gauge steel table this time I used out those same outdoor tough wheels and I made wheelbarrow handles out of it this is generation 2 this table and it has a handle that telescopes out so it slides out of the way and this comes out you can pull it out and then lift your table outside to work each of these mild steel Blanchard ground plates are ground to a certain precision. Um, there's 75 pounds of sheet right there, so there's 150 on that table. Nothing breaks a sweat. That's a steel saw right there. I use that saw for cutting mild steel. It's a great saw. My generic, I don't know, drill press or whatever you want to call it. Some computers from a business I used to own. This is another enclosure that I started working on before I started to lose interest. I was making it special for somebody. Um, but then I figured I'd put all this work in and they don't buy it. Don't mind those welds. That's something else. It was me experimenting with something. So, yeah. And today, I'm working on... This is a vinyl rack. You can see... I don't know if you can... See, let me get closer here see all the vinyl on the back of the truck to keep it clean out of the way 
And this rack. It says Chinese rack. I paid like, I swear I paid 300 or 400 for this stupid thing. And the welds start breaking. You can see some of the welds broke. I don't know if you can see, but it looks like something broke there. But that's not the weld part. One of these, the welds are, are breaking. And then the, the material slumps down. You can see there's like the paint breaking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop it in half. Make two separate carts out of it so it's lighter. And I'm going to make it wheels so I can pull it in and out of my garage. For the longest time after the weld started breaking, I wasn't able to bring it in and out of my house anymore. And in addition to that, this ledge, this ledge right here, this is my foot. When that's full of vinyl, it probably weighs 500, 600 pounds. And I couldn't get it over that ledge without a crowbar. I decided that I need to just redo this so I can bring it in and out. Yeah, so you get the point. This is a wheel I bought that I never used. Here is a grill grate that I cook meat on, on my custom fire pit. Here is the fire pit that I made that I think is pretty cool. And you can see right here. Um, ah, I can't pull them out. But these slide in and out. I can't do it with one hand, but those little hole things, the, the perforated sheet, the expanded metal, slides in and out so you can just broom it out or you can just dump it out. So it gives me some flexibility. And the other thing that I make, my sweetheart, say hello. The other thing that I make is pizzas. So I know that's a lot of things to combine together, but I wanna make pizzas, signs, 3D printers, Ooh, speaking of 3D printers, look at this bad boy. This is a 3D printer I was engineering before I lost interest in the whole hobby. I didn't lose interest, I just lost interest in sharing my, my wisdom with people. I still pursue it but privately now. That thing's a beast. It's heavy and good printers are heavy. They're not lightweight. Stainless steel. This is this material, stainless steel right there. Um linear rails that I have that's just some of the linear rails uh, lithophanes of my daughter they look really cool when you put light underneath them let's go back to the other side linear rail blocks that I never use nice ones not cheapos linear rails More linear rails. Like I was just gonna, I'm trying to start a business selling my designer printer because I think it's the best. And I'll, I'll end up, I don't want to give away everything in this video. Maybe the next video is me welding up that cart. But here's my drag racing 3D printer. Control the, the screen right there. And I get all my stuff done here. It's a mess. I mean, any table surface is gonna turn into a mess. I noticed like it's a common thing. In workplaces like big tables turn into storage spaces so i got to clean this up yeah i love it i wanted to put this in an enclosure but the amount of steel i would need probably would be 200 bucks 300 price of steel is going up so it's hard to you know be so excited to build these things as the price of everything skyrocketing here is my metal spool holder we had a storm and it wrecked everything back here blew this banner down the one thing that didn't take any dings was this metal box. It got rusty, of course, because the rain got on it. Um, it was supposed to be painted. Like I said, I keep I lost interest because nobody seems to care about good stuff in the 3D print community. And this thing took a spill. But this this bad boy, this steel beast, um, didn't even budge. It was it was pretty awesome to see something that actually worked as intended. And it's designed to be fireproof, etc., and shockproof. In fact, this, this spool holder, that these are removable spool holders. So you can see it comes out. And then, so you don't have that dragging. I don't like noise when I'm printing. I like it silent. My printer is pretty silent. So that reduces the noise, but just not having the spool jangle around. All right, guys, I'm done talking. Let me make a final exit video. Hopefully the audio, I haven't edited it yet, but hopefully the audio is not too bad. Something I've noticed about this, uh, this 
this phone the iPhone thing when you use the front and back cameras is that the audio switches from the front and back without telling you on they the the filmic app is pretty dumb it doesn't allow for good blogging I don't know why they tried to automate some of it but once you set the settings you remember them but if you switch camera then it changes all these settings you don't even know about doesn't even tell you about it's pretty dumb but anyways point being that's what I'm up to I want to share some of this and I hope that you guys enjoy if you like what you saw like subscribe leave a polite comment hey guys it's been a few days since I uh started this project and i just want to finish up with some um updates this is a rocket stove i made it's pretty cool i actually cooked eggs on it and uh when you throw something in top there it burns and then creates a chimney effect and sucks air through the side yeah that worked pretty well this is that cart you saw earlier in the video i started taking it apart i realized the, the amount of work and grinding and scraping off paint would just it wasn't worth it so i went and built another one a uh, better cart and here's the cart that uh, i replaced and it's just easier to get over that ledge right there i can't get a can't get stuff over that so it needs bigger wheels but now i can pull this in in and out of my garage load it up um clear out the garage when i weld so i'm not damaging the vinyls but um like i said like I said, like and subscribe if you want to see more. Leave a comment. Let me know you're interested. Um, and thank you very much for watching the video uh, through its entirety. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.